Keys, I'm, I'm gonna stay, because I feel like, especially in coming into education, when we write down lists, it actually becomes easier for us to see them and we can actually execute on them. And we had a high level conversation the other day and it was funny, because you never know where inspiration is gonna come from. I was like, yo, Keys, man, I got this brilliant idea. And you looked at me and said, yeah, you got it from me. <laughs> I said, how, how you know I got it from you? Because I said it before. Even subconsciously, you might have heard it. I said, damn, this brother's smart. But let's talk about it, because this is bigger than business, but these are like life principles. And so you got this theory of ease. Mm -hmm. And so let's break this down, because I know everybody's writing. That was great eight apps that Shai just gave. Let's continue with writing. Let's start with education and how, from a business standpoint, that could be valuable, and obviously from a life standpoint. Well, it goes towards growth. Right? Education is what you learn. You understand me? And so what you learn will dictate what you can do. So when you talked about that model of effectiveness, he told you what he uses. But the game is now that you now have the knowledge, you need the access. The access is not just what it is, but how to use it. Right? So the education would be, okay, Shad, I just heard you say that you built a multi-million dollar company with eight apps. Can you give me the game? Because otherwise, the time that it's going to take for me to learn it, is going to be wild, except when you can give me the game, and if I can pay you to give me the game, now you're just giving me access. The people with the most access today wins. So having the right coach, having the right mentor, having the right teacher, it's no longer about just taking a course, right? It's now about having a coach, because everybody have all this access to information, but some people are using it better because they have better access. So now everybody got social media, but some people giving them the game on how to create a media company and a business. So for me, the education is also learning how to learn, right? See, low level, well, most people think that low level means something bad. It doesn't. Low levels is just the details. So we have different type of learners. Most people cannot grasp onto the details because they don't understand the high level, which is the concept. So when you're learning anything new, you have to say, do I understand the high level first? If you do that, now you have a foundation to build on in your brain. So when we're learning, we go through this process of unlocking and relocking, because I got the keys, right? <laughs> 19 of them. Now, <laughs> when we reprogram it, we unlocking. So literally, neurons in our brains detach from each other. New information, new perceptions, new ideas get built into that neuron, then it relocks in. So we're so afraid of change Right, because we want to stay the same. We feel like it, we're, we're missing a piece of ourselves, but replace the word change with growth. Replace the word change with evolution, right? Because then people won't be afraid of upgrading, won't be afraid of updating. So for me, education is the most important because when I look across the spectrum of how all people build their wealth, it's based on what they know. Yeah, so the first power principle was education. Let's go to the next one, exposure. Exposure. Exposure is how vast your mind will actually be, right? Once you are exposed to something and your mind continues to grow, it will never collapse again. See, the universe expands at the rate which light are reaching areas that it never reached before. So that means that when the universe is getting expanded, it's based on light reaching new places, it's the same thing that happened in your mind. Once you gain enlightenment, now your brain has been sparked in, sparked in new ways. Now it cannot be closed again. Now you've seen three black men on stage with the most dapperest attire on this planet Earth teaching about financial education. You've been exposed to something that will change the foundation of your reality that you walk on every single day. So now that you've seen that, you can't go back to the streets. You can't go back to the hood. You can't just go back to your apartment and not want more for yourself. See, in America, they give us the American dream, so we're never comfortable with what we have. But what is? the United Kingdom vision. See, vision gives you direction. But without vision, you don't know where you're going. You are blind. So you must be exposed to things outside this land. And the most beautiful thing social media did, it had exposed us to brilliant minds, education, perspective, and people that normally would have not gotten that opportunity. Yeah. Let's give them two more. Emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is how you deal with life. You know, I just learned that uh, I'm a violent communicator. I know y'all probably wouldn't believe that. But violent communication goes to the theory that subconsciously we speak from a war mind to be either offensive or defensive. So I notice when I send things in short form, it lacks empathy, right? Because now a person can't properly understand me. 
The beauty about high level conversations, it make it very hard to be misunderstood because I got out the full context of my point. So when we're talking about emotional intelligence, the thing about men, men lack emotional experience. Women grow up dealing with their emotions more than men. So when that is the reason that they mature at a faster rate than men, right? See, women are more equipped to deal with the low level details. Men are more of the high level concepts. So when we look at the difference between the type of jobs that men and women go, it's based on their emotional intelligence. So you as a man, when you learn how to deal with the spirit of yourself, then you can deal with your woman correctly, right? The problem is we get angry because we don't know how to identify the feeling. Have you been, uh, uh, are you jealous? Is this a jealous NGG that you're putting out? Jealousy is when you see somebody have something and you don't want them to have it. You want it for yourself. Envy is when you don't particularly don't want them to have it, but you want it as well, right? And sometimes you don't know when you're being jealous or envious of your brother or your sister. But see, that emotional intelligence allows you to identify those factors and those flaws and bring them to light. Because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, when children start to experiment with sex, they do it in the dark. Because even a child has the innate nature that that is wrong, so they don't do it in the light. So when we work on our shadow selves, and that's dealing with who you really are, who you don't show the world, that if they seen this, would they still love me? But when you have the emotional intelligence to identify that and you act in a fearless manner, because courage is acting in the face of fear, not in the absence of it. So people ask me all the time, how do I become fearless? You have to act even when that feeling starts to creep up on you and try to stop you. That to me is divine emotional intelligence, not being afraid of your shadow self. Yeah. Woo. Y'all gonna learn today. I think the last one, I think the last one is most important. And it's something that has been a catchphrase of ours from the beginning. Information is gonna be on us, execution is gonna be on you. Mm -hmm. So everybody in this room tonight is getting the information, but talk about the power of execution. Mm. Y'all ever heard the story of the first procrastinators in history? So listen, this is what happened, right? It was one day these two brothers, they was working. They chopping up bricks for the pyramids. And they've been doing this work every single day, right? They don't take no breaks, they get the work done for the day, then they go home, and then one day, this brother, he had this team he was trying to see. So he said, how about we do this later? He said, let's do this tomorrow. He said, what is later and what's tomorrow? Because they didn't have no concept of it. It was always now and next. See, a baby concept of time is always now and next. We don't learn later till we get older. So what happened was, he said, later? Man, so you mean that this is a time we don't have to do it now? He said, that sounds good. So they both decided to do it later. Now, from their lineage, they created the ancestry of laziness and procrastination. Now, this is some people's ancestors in here. Some of you all waited last minute to get your ticket to come to InvestFest. That's a because fact. Because the science of procrastination is when you have pain in the mind and it stops you from moving forward. So I don't feel like doing it, so I'll do it later. And later never comes, so you never get it done. So what you have to do is you have to learn how to do now because it says be and it is, not be and maybe later. See, we used to be a be and it is type of people. Any thought that I get, see, sometimes they time sensitive. See, sometimes that idea can be done at the wrong time and then it's failure, but the right idea at the right time always equals success. So you have to know that procrastination is the abortion clinic of ideas. But the most painful part of the pregnancy is when a woman is pushing and it's that crowning phase. Sometimes they gotta put her under. Sometimes they gotta do a C-section. But if you push through the pain, then you give birth to every idea that you have.